Welcome back to Channel 37. I'm Lily, a classical musician. And I'm Casper, a scientist. And, and we're, we're both, both synth nerds. nerds. <laughs> we're really excited to share this next leg of the journey with you, where we actually try out our soldering skills with a surface mount uh, project. So what are we working on today, Lily? Today we're working on the six mix. Okay. You want to tell them a little bit more about it? Okay, so this is the PCB for the Antumbra 6 mix. Antumbra has gained some renown uh, by producing these micronized versions of mutable instruments modules, but they also have their own line of modules. And this one caught my eye because we're in need for a utility mixer for the next phase of our module Emporium expansion because we're going to plug some drums into it. I also wanted to tell you a little bit about how we put together this kit. We got the front panel and the PCB from Pushman in the UK, and then we got all of the components from Mauser, which is a really fast and reliable company. And we kind of did it this way because it's it's fun to hunt for um, all, the, all the components ourselves, and I don't know it makes us more involved in the entirety of the process. It also saves us a bit of money because I think the parts were maybe 15 euros. Uh, the PCB and front panel were about 22 euros. Mm -hmm. So we're building a utility mixer for less than 50 dollars. Yeah, quite a deal. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about this module. You can use the first three inputs, send them to the first output, and the second three inputs to send them to the second output. But the first three inputs are also normaled to the next three. So you can also use it as a six to one mixer. It takes both audio and control voltages, and it is DC coupled. So the signal that you send out is at full modular strength. So you could use this to mix down different CV signals and generate more complex modulation, or you can use it as a basic audio mixer, which is what we want to do with it. This is kind of a um, trial by fire for you. Yeah, this is my first uh, experience with surface mount soldering. I've just done the, the through hole soldering before, so um, I'm a bit nervous, but I have done my research beforehand and these uh, nimble musician fingers might give me a little advantage. So we'll see. We'll uh, put it to the test. My first surface mount device soldering experience was not so smooth. Even though I'm not a musician, I think my hands are pretty steady, but it was challenging. So I hope to redeem myself um, when building this module. So what do you say? Should we get to soldering? Let's go. This is our setup for this project. We have the KSGER T12 soldering iron. We have some steel wool to clean the soldering iron tip. We have a pair of precision tweezers. We have this PCB holder with a magnifying glass, a few T12 tips, and the solder that we're using for this project is a Stanol HS10 6040 lead zinc mix. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna give the PCB a bath in isopropanol alcohol uh, to make sure that any grime and any grease that might be left on it is cleared off. So the first part we're going to solder are three TL072 op amps, that means operational amplifier. These are packed in a little strip, and as far as surface mount devices go, these guys are the biggest we're going to work with today. So it's a nice way to get warmed up. Note on the PCB that there's a little divot in the silk screening for this IC that indicates the orientation of the part. The part itself does not have a corresponding divot, but what it does have is a beveled edge. And we're gonna use that to get the part oriented. I think this soldering tip is too small, so I'm gonna try a larger one, which can convey more heat to the pad. It's very hard to see whether these contacts are solid, so I'm applying a little bit of flux and reflowing these joints. Alright, so that's the three ICs done. This was more challenging than we anticipated, and we also decided to get rid of the PCB holder and just tape the PCB to this wooden board um, because it's flat at this point so it gives us a little bit more control. So here's another interesting realization. We are working from a build guide for PCB version 
1.0 and this PCB is version 1.1. So a lot of the parts are in different places than they are supposed to be according to the build guide. Today we're gonna actually test our six mix. First we're gonna do a smoke test, we just want to make sure it doesn't blow up. So we unplug all the rest of the modules and we just leave this uh, power strip out. And I am going to suit up with glasses to protect my eyes just in case this is um, menacing, we'll see. Okay, you want to match the red line on this cable to the indication on the module. Here we go. Woohoo! No smoke. Good sign. <laughs> Sounds good? Yep. Now let's do the other side. We got no juice. So the right side of our 6mix isn't working and we reached out to the creator of the 6mix to help us debug this problem and he advised us to measure all the way down the signal chain uh, at the back. And when we were trying to do that we realized we made two mistakes. The first mistake we made is that we mounted all of these LEDs facing outward which makes it really hard to see the circuit because they are staring us right in the face. So we're going to have to flip all of these. And the second thing is that we have only a very simple oscilloscope for measuring, but it has these really coarse clamps and it will be difficult to use those to measure these tiny, tiny surface mount connectors. But there's an easy and lo-fi solution. We just take the clamp and a sewing pin and we clamp the sewing pin so we can use the pin tip to take our measurements. The signal is coming in at these resistors, then it's going through this switch and then it's going to this op amp. So we're going to measure all of those. So the first thing we're going to measure is this first resistor. That looks like our sawtooth wave. Now I'm measuring the second resistor. That's our square wave. And the third, that is our triangle wave. So the signals are coming in. Now I'm going to measure the switch and the op amp and I think the signal is getting lost perhaps at the op amp so we're going to try to swap out the op amp First of all, we mounted the LEDs the correct way around this time. Second of all, here's the moment of truth. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a mixer to me. <laughs> so for this patch, we're using both sides of the 6mix for different purposes. On the left, we're combining two channels of the dot sequencer to create a polyrhythm. That polyrhythm is triggering both 
the amplifier and the filter envelopes on the Mini Brute. Uh, the sound that the Mini Brute is processing is the bass note of this chord from the micro plats and the rest of the chord from the micro plats is being bandpassed to create this background drone. Now the drone sound and the bass notes are combined in the right channels of the six mix and the third input is a distorted version of the bass note with the new tone which we built ourselves. So we just recorded our first demo with the six mix and we wanted to take a little walk outside to get some fresh air and share our experiences with you about the build. How did it go for you, Casper? It was difficult. Uh, we messed up again a bunch of times. <laughs> I think we fried one of the op amps. But the main difference with my previous experience is that I actually enjoyed the debugging process this time and had some faith that we wouldn't end up with an expensive paperweight. And indeed, we were able to salvage the unit, which is great. I had previously regretted buying the second soldering iron, but it came in really useful to heat the fried op amp from both sides while you use tweezers uh, to lift it up. So that was a prime example of teamwork <laughs> and using the tools at your disposal. What was it like for you, Lily? I'm not going to lie, it was a huge challenge. Um, there's nothing that could have prepared me to fully understand how difficult the, my first surface mounting soldering experience would be. And I would definitely like to retract my former statement about my nimble musician fingers coming in handy because that was certainly not the case. Uh, by the end of it, after a lot of trial and error, I felt a little bit more comfortable with the sequence of the heating and the bonding and the removal of the, of the soldering iron, but it took a little bit of practice. To conclude, thank you guys for joining us on this build of the Six Mix. We're really looking forward to our next build, which will be a lot of through-hole soldering, so definitely a relief for both of us. Um, if you want to see more of that, please like and subscribe, and see you next time. Cheers. Good?